Hey, you got a bike pump I can borrow real quick? Yeah, for sure, man. You got a flat? Nah, just make some espresso. Thanks, dude. You want one? Today, we're heading back to Kickstarter land and looking at a prototype espresso maker called the X-Bar. This particular system really caught my eye because of how it's apparently able to accomplish flow control in a pretty inexpensive package. We'll see if that's actually true. Now, before I jump in, I should mention that the company did send me this unit for review. And on that note, it is a prototype. So the finishings are pretty rough in some areas around the edges, but that will definitely be fixed on the final product. I will leave a link to the Kickstarter campaign or where you can buy it down in the description below. So, starting off with the physical machine, I think this thing looks pretty darn cool. And the build quality is also quite solid. There's not a single piece of plastic to be found except for a rubber gasket between the two chambers. Getting those two pieces threaded together was a little bit difficult, but again, I hope that's just something they need to work out before the final version. The whole system sits on a metal stand, and overall it's something I'd have no problem leaving out on my kitchen counter, both from a size and aesthetics perspective. Now, getting used to how the system works did take a little bit of getting used to, but overall it's actually quite straightforward. This bottom portion is a water reservoir that can hold up to 100 milliliters of water, while the top section screws directly on and is responsible for the pressurizing and pressure control through one of two methods. A pump using a standard Schrader bike valve, or an 8 gram compressed CO2 canister. So, we have a water source and pressure, but where does the coffee go? Well, the system comes with sort of a portafilter ring, but the interesting part is that it's actually designed to work with any E61 compatible components. So if you have an extra portafilter lying around, you can use it. And if you want to upgrade the stock filter baskets and shower screen to something more precision like an IMS, those will also fit in the system. That's pretty cool. I've been using my bottomless porta filter for the majority of my testing because I found it was nice to have a handle to lock it in and the wood on my bottomless porta filter just happened to almost perfectly match that on the X-Bar. So what's it actually like to use? Using the CO2 cartridge to pressurize did take some getting used to, but you actually had a fair amount of control as was advertised. You could slowly move the valve to the right to get up to a three bar pre-infusion and then leave it there as long as you want. then creep it up a little bit further to a nine bar and leave it there. And then you can close off the gas and open a pressure release valve on the back of the machine to taper off the pressure towards the end of the shot if that's something you wanna do. Now, with that being said, one thing you won't be able to do is immediately stop the flow. If you don't want that taper off towards the end, you're gonna have to pull out your cup and replace it with something else. The flow simply does not stop on a dime. With that being said, I have two main issues with using CO2 as the pressurization method for this machine. The first of which is that it's a pretty costly and wasteful method of pressurizing for espresso. Each of those canisters is gonna cost around a dollar and is only good for about two or three shots from my testing. Also, as pressurized gas expands, it also rapidly cools, meaning that in a system that's already pretty sensitive to getting it hot enough, you're blasting your brew water with cold air right as you brew, which is not exactly ideal. This is why I was far more interested in the second pressurization method. Using a floor or handheld bike pump, you can achieve a similar level of control. And because the chamber is so small, one pump was enough to get it up to three bar, and another two or three took it all the way up to nine nowhere near the level of exaggerated pumping you saw happening in the video intro. Now, it should be noted that when using a pump, you lose use of the pressure profiling lever, as it's only in line with the CO2 canister. So, you have to watch the pressure gauge and pump accordingly. But again, that was far easier than expected to actually accomplish because the chamber is so small. Much like any manual system, it's important to ensure that it's properly preheated before going to pull your shot. Otherwise, the metal components will sap the heat out of the water and lead to an under-extracted shot. Even once preheated, I recommend going about 5 degrees hotter than you otherwise would just to make up for those heat inefficiencies. Do it all right, and the X-Bar actually produced some really good espresso. And because it's using a standard portafilter, the workflow and cleanup was really straightforward. 
One added benefit of using air to pressurize is that the pucks came out very clean and dry. Towards the end of the shot, you're going to want to switch cups and let the rest of the air escape. This slightly odd looking foamy action forces most of the water from the coffee, leaving you with a very nice puck. Now, the system did have some quirks that I hope the designers will work out before the final release, such as the threading between the top and bottom chamber, the fact that the body doesn't fasten in any way to the stand and just kind of slides around, and having some kind of rubber base so that it doesn't damage your countertop would be nice. Throughout testing, I was kind of faced with a bit of an internal debate, which was, would they have been better off just putting a lever on top of this system? And the conclusion that I came to was maybe, but I'm glad that they didn't. And that's because the brewing experience on the system is very different to a lever machine. Once it's up to pressure, you don't have to keep applying that pressure like on a lever machine. You can step back, look at the pressure gauge, look at your flow, and then calmly regulate it using the outlet valve on the back. This company is clearly trying to push the boundaries of what's possible in a budget manual system, and all things considered, I think they've succeeded in that. Again, I'll leave a link to the XBAR system down in the description below if you want to check it out. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.